Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we're going to talk about a series of unfortunate events, season 1 episode 8, it's called The Miserable Mill Part 2. What were you expecting? Are you expecting a really long title there? Oh, I mean, have you possibly given me any reason to expect such a thing? I thought I'll, I'll do the opposite, I'll, I'll do it as quickly. Because you, could, you couldn't get any longer, I'll do so you sh- thought, let's go short. Yeah, short as I possibly could, that was the plan. So this this is the finale of the season one, this is the wrap-up, uh, obviously of the second part of the, the Miserable Mill, but wrap-up of the whole season, and kind of similar to the first episode, uh, this this last story, and uh, not a lot of comedy, this was more plot, It was dealing with stuff... Wasn't it? Yeah. Like that. Uh, no, it was good stuff. Still, yeah, a lot, lot of intriguing elements uh, peppered out th- through it, and I think the the idea that the uh, you know Kobe Smothers and Will Arnett's characters, the fact that their house is victim to a fire, much like mm. the, uh, you know how we started the show, and, and we kind of see how this one started as well. Yeah, it was just like a it was like a laser almost going through the window. Yeah, and yeah, setting fire to the photograph, but that actually tied. We actually get a hint that maybe our kids will run into their kids. In well, I mean, I think we two. see them at the end, do we not? Well, we do, yeah, but, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm saying, yeah, but we won't see them yeah. interact until next season, presumably. Yeah. Uh, if they do interact, if, unless something steps in and stops them, but, yeah, so, no, so that, that was obviously very interesting, and, you know, who who was in the car, who, because, I, I mean, I think I always just kind of assumed that Olaf was the one who killed their parents. Yeah, but... And, but he can't have done. Yeah, this but this, one. yeah, that's this one. Obviously, this one's not him. So that it means, well, I assume that it would be the same person that this all connected. Because why wouldn't it be? Speaking um, of it yeah, all being... Olaf is part of a counter group, perhaps. Yeah. Speaking of it all being connected, uh, when Lemony Snicket's uh, talking about all the different facts that he's went through over the season, you know, the the house, the, the house, Monty, and he goes, oh yeah, and they get all the journalists get this wrong too. Lemony Snicket, not dead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. I was like getting that, that little tidbit that I really appreciated. But, yeah, uh, the idea that he it says he's a fugitive as well. Yeah, so I think that for me confirms that eventually he will come into the main story at some point in some way. Maybe not. This this might be f- like future tense him telling it in retrospect. Yes. So it may not be him with all this knowledge, but I feel like he no, will definitely. pop up. And of course, the other big hint at the end is when they go to the school. I'm, I'm skipping the main plot here. I'll go back, obviously, but. The the photograph in the school that yes. has Olaf and him in it. Yeah. As you, presumably young people. It's doctored, I guess, to make them look younger, but you can tell it's them. Olaf's got his yeah, work ahead. Yeah, I think it's more important that you can tell it's them than, yeah. they, than them looking young, because yeah. that's you know the point of it. I think Patrick Warburton, I can't imagine looking young, so he just didn't look young to me. That's a fair point. He's too big and bulky and manly. There's just it's impossible. He's got those big, broad shoulders. Yeah. Big jaw so as hard, well. It's hard to imagine him like anything younger than like twenties. Even then, I can't imagine him in his twenties. To me, to me, he's just he's been middle aged forever. I get that. I can, I can kind of picture twenties though, but as soon as you go under, uh, it's like I'm I'm struggling to see it. Yeah. So so the the the, plot, the gist of this one, the main gist of it, in the in the mill, is that we're still having clothes getting hypnotized and doing stuff, and it turns out the plan from Olaf and Georgina is that they want him to commit an accident because Sir, who's the, the owner of the mill, doesn't want to let them go because they eat less than adults do. So they're good workers in theory. Yeah, it's half pay essentially. Yeah, he's saving money. And for him, half pay is even saying something when he's already not paying everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a good point. <laughs> he's just feeding them and that's about it. And so we get this ridiculously wacky scene where he drops the big stamping tool onto mm. onto Optimist's leg. Yeah. And it's flattened under the, the print of the... It's very amusing. Very amusing, very cartoony. I will say, probably the biggest laugh actually I got was in this in this scene, there was a couple of callbacks to some running jokes that had been set up. And this has happened a few times where I've noticed like something they've introduced in terms of wordplay or something will pop up in later episodes but the two that popped up here is in the last episode when Snicket was explaining what an optimist was the example he used is that if someone loses an arm they'll go oh free uh, mannequin manic- uh, manicures uh, for uh, yeah, yeah. half or half off manicures for the rest of my life Yeah, and he says that exact same thing but with pedicures about his legs yeah. and it was just a nice little callback to that and then another one was at one point Sonny said uh, s'mores, s'mores or whatever. She, she added yeah, the, yeah. The, the SH sound to another word. 
It's again, yeah. just little callbacks to previous things. It's the sort of thing where they're, they're amusing enough the first time around, but it's so much funnier to revisit it later. It is, yeah, it really is. And that, that was that was kind of the height of the comedy here for the most part. Uh, because mostly it was, you know, Klaus being zombified and yeah. Violet trying to find the trigger word because she realises that there's a Because tr- they sneak into the, the, the eye building and they yeah. see that the uh, Charles is being hypnotised and they actually find... Cl- little skeletons in the closet yeah and they, they investigate stuff and they they realize there has to be a word but they can't figure it out and it's not until one of them almost says it at the end and uh got a bit more hook man what he wasn't uh not having, enough though not enough but he was there it was nice to see him at least before the before things wrapped up. yeah i mean we didn't see any other hinge people no we didn't which is a shame almost you always you almost think oh it's the it finale is, I want to see but you're like one. he is the highlight so if we're gonna have one of them yeah Absolutely. Uh, we get a ridiculously cartoon uh, James Bond-esque almost death scene with Charles on the, the saw, going towards the saw I blade. loved every second of that. Oh, that was good. Yeah, all the, all the bickering uh, outside of it with everyone else. Yeah, and obviously because Klaus is hypnotising, pulling the lever, and they're telling him to forward and back, forward and back, and the doctor comes in and she's just like, don't listen to your sister. And, and this one, Hawkman goes to Olaf, oh, yeah, why didn't you think of that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was kind of his one big good yeah, yeah. moment. It was uh, worth having him there just for that. Yeah, actually, the last small moment I did like with him is when they're running away, and Olaf says he doesn't need anyone. He says, "Give me a boost." And then yeah. I like how he sort of spits in his hooks and then sort of rubs them together before he. I was also really impressed that he climbed up that frame and over the fence in the pouring rain that it was with hook hands. Yeah, it was funny because I I don't think they wanted it to be raining. I think it just happened to be raining when yeah. they were shooting because the previous shot didn't have rain no no it didn't so it was one of these things where oh, they just can't hide the fact that it's raining because typically rain doesn't always show up on film so most movies kind of get away with it it's, it's because not... they had the big spotlights right there though yeah that, that's why you could see it because typically yeah. you don't see it that's why movie rain's always really heavy because they have to make it super because they always do it themselves they, they have it blasting out and the reason why it's so heavy in movies compared to real life, but I mean, occasionally it can rain that heavy, but not usually. Usually it's lighter than that. The reason why it's always that heavy in movies is because that's the only way it can show up on camera. Yeah. Because the regular rain doesn't, so. Yeah, unless you've got those big massive spotlights. <laughs> exactly, yeah, unless you've got light. Because even sometimes when you look at the window if it's raining, you don't really see it always unless you look at a street light and you can see yes. it in front of the light. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, at night time, obviously, during the day, you can see it to your heart's content. Unless you're blind. Unless you're blind, that's a possibility. But yeah, so that that was kind of the main plot, and we we, we had all that play out, and there was some fun scenes there. Them sneaking around with, the, you know, Olaf and Georgina arguing about hypnotism and all the rest of it. That was good fun, uh, and yeah, it almost feels like we're not going to get get secrets, but we find out the the redacted page of the book, which Charles saved, actually said their parents didn't start the fire; they actually put out the fire and yeah. helped people. They they were responsible for saving lives. So, because it was funny for for a while, I was thinking, well, since we don't know who the parents are now, like doesn't could, really matter then, does it? Like, could they be villains? Like, could could that maybe be the twist that we might lead to some at some point that they're not that great? But then this is implying that no, they actually were good people. We just don't know who they were there yet. Yeah. What was most curious to me is that they've got that photo, and we've said that the parents have to be in that photo because they, they've responded as if they are. Yeah, they they go. They're like, yeah. oh, you're with my parents. They've said that. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, like, A, if they already cast the parents for next season, or whenever we're going to have to see more of them. If we ever do, we might not. But have they cast them, or have they not cast them? And here's something I think they might do. I think when they do eventually cast them... Digitally impose yeah, it. Yeah, they'll, they'll go top. back and just alter the old episodes so the photograph's got the right people on it. They will do. I think, I think that's a sly thing they might do. Yeah. I think it's almost a little bit of a waste for, for Kirby Smalls and Will Arnett, because obviously it's like they're dead now. Presumably. Well, I mean, that, that's the assumption. The fire, and then the kids are at the school with the. Yeah, so. but we spent a lot of this season thinking their parents were actually alive and just well, yeah, on the run. So. But it feels like they're dead, and I kind of felt like that was a little bit wasted. Like, we, we had all these great moments, like little bits here and there, and it was worth it just for the twist, don't get me wrong. But ultimately, it's almost what was the, the end game other than just to get these kids here? I think no, I think you answered it yourself there. I think it is the twist because I think 
I think th- th- being them and then being like, oh, these are names. These are going to be main characters because we recognise them. Yeah. I think that's what sells the twist. I think when you get to the twist and it turns out they're not actually their parents, it works more because it's almost like an arrogance where you see them and you assume, oh, they- it has to be their parents because these are the names. That makes sense. So, no, I, I think it is justified. Yeah. I-, I think it helps the twist uh, having it be them. Fair and it makes And it makes you think, oh, they can't possibly die because it's Kobe Smulders and Will Arnett. Yeah. So I, I, th- I think it works. I think yeah. it works. I am looking forward to presumably next season the the group of them teaming up, like uh, having it be a, a bigger group rather than just the three of them. Yeah, yeah, that, that should that should be good. And presumably the first two part of next season will be set in the school before they move on. Uh, yes, I believe that it's the Austere Academy. I believe is the yeah. next one. I love how is a good end. Uh, Mister Poe's like, yeah, the, the person who built this place is uh, was the. De- was very depressed and it looks like a graveyard all the buildings yeah. look like tombstones and I was like oh, I that's, it. that's really funny yeah I'm, I'm down with that yeah yeah. I, oh. I also really like the, the meta jokes that we had running through mm. uh, obviously they kept on oh this 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 season week year yeah you, you know they're, like, they're talking about oh we'll see you on a, uh, semester they were like oh this season and I think Olaf did it once where he, where he says this year and he's like, oh, a week. Oh, let's, go, let's just go with season. You probably watch it as a season. It's yeah. amusing. Yeah. No, no, they've been good with that throughout. We've had a lot of good meta little jokes, but not, yeah. nothing tops to stare at the camera in episode three. No, it doesn't. These were not as good that. And again, more subtle just to go with some of the, the adult humor and, and referencing the, the optometrist. I, I noticed her name this time. It's Dr. Orwell. Hmm. And obviously we're in a, a zombified state of utter control. Yeah, yeah, 1984. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very so clever. It's, uh, good, good little touch. Nice little yeah. reference. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was a pretty straightforward episode. I, I do. I probably would say that this last two part was probably my least favorite of the four. I agree. It's probably because it had to focus on the plot instead of the comedy. Yeah, I think it, but, it had to focus on the plot instead of the comedy. And I also think it was just. I think the plot itself was a little bit less fun. Just a it was bit. like it was it was good still, and it was obviously what needed to happen to shake up the formula and get to the yeah. next part of the show going forward next season. And then, and I guess the other thing would be that Olaf's character wasn't as fun. I think as the the last two. Yeah, he didn't get as much to do with it either. Yeah, yeah, because we got we got that cool flashback and the whole black and white metaphor, and then some scenes were in black and white, and that was a nice little touch. And it was. Um, it's good. Obviously, we can't finish talking about it without mentioning the fact that there's like a little uh, song, a little number at the end where they all start mm. singing about the season. Did you hate that as a as a someone who hates musicals? Uh, and and you, you hate singing for no reason, especially rather than just musicals as a whole. Yeah, I didn't hate it, it for two reasons. One, it kind of fits the the offbeat style of the show. Yeah. Uh, and two, it's it's clearly just something they want to do at the end. I can see them doing this at the end of season two again, but not throughout. It feels kind of like how in the opening titles they have Neil Patrick Harris sing yeah. it and then do the, the extra verse, depending on the story. It feels like a, a version of that just yeah. for the end of the show. Yeah, I feel like this, this conclusion. And uh, you have Patrick Warburton wearing the school uniform up in the, up in the oh. hill. Yeah, uh, which ties into the fact we just seen that he went to this school in the photograph, which was kind of a last little tidbit. Yeah, uh, but obviously the very symbolic thing where he takes the two parts of the spyglass and connects them. The idea being that both sets of kids have a different part, and yeah, they, they, they'll figure things out maybe from there. I think it was very clever though. Like the, the, these final two episodes, they really set up that this show can be. It's been witty in its comedy, but this shows it can be clever in its plot structure as well and what it's actually doing. Oh yeah, because the twist in the last one was really good. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. I think this one just, I think I think it 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 does a great job of making it feel like a season finale, but at the same time, I also noticed that it isn't really a season finale. Like they've kind of given it that to it, and there's a couple of things that make it feel different from the rest. But at the same time, it doesn't really feel like a big conclusion to the first third of the story. It just feels like we decided to end the season here. Yeah, like, okay, I guess it just means we've got a year before the next two parts instead of just going straight on to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's like not remove fault. those like end little bits of like the the song and and yeah. such and you could literally just go straight to the next episode yeah. in theory and it wouldn't feel off. Yeah. At least those dropping them off at school kind of sets up the idea that a year can pass, which they need to let happen because the kids are going to age. Yeah. 
all of them are going to age, and you have to deal with that. So them being at a school and saying they've been at the school for a year before the plot gets moving again, fine. It's that clever. works. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, no, I really enjoyed the season. Uh, surprisingly, so I mean, I wasn't not looking forward to it, but I was definitely not expecting to like it as much as I did. No, I thought, oh, this might be fun. You know, it might be all right. But I actually ended up like, going, oh, this was really good. It was very clever. It was witty and funny, more, more, maybe more so than we expected on all counts. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely funnier than I thought it was going to be. I, for the majority of it, there was just. Great... I, I think we had perhaps a worry that it would be a, a little childish as well. Mm given the the source material and the the film that we'd both seen in the past. But this, it wasn't at all. It was child-friendly, but it wasn't childish. Yeah, I I think it it surprises in a lot of ways. It was edgier when it needed to be. It was emotional when it needed to be. It was usually witty in both big ways and small ways and subtle ways and not-so-subtle ways. And uh, it had some good running themes throughout. So I would recommend this show. I I think it's... Something different from what we normally watch. I think it's something different from all the other Netflix originals that we've seen. Oh, definitely. This. And, speak, and speaking of, ne- Netflix are kind of justifying their own costs with just these originals at this point. Cause... Yeah, there was a point maybe six, seven months ago I considered going, do I really need Netflix? Because you know, at, at this point, I'm basically just I have Netflix for the originals. Whatever else is there is cool. It's a nice little bonus, but I'm. Uh... Well, that's what it was. I was like, I'm not using it that much. Do I really need it? But then I stuck around because uh, they had a one of the originals. Like, I think it was one of the Marvel ones coming up in the, yeah. in the following month. So I stuck around for that, and then they've just constantly given yeah. me stuff, like almost every month. That it's like, yeah, sure, keep keep taking my money. Yeah, it's fa- I mean, this OA travelers like we've been just getting handy. That's three in the last like two months. Yeah, we've been getting handy. Tons okay, I think of that's stuff. three in the space of a month. OA was probably mid December. Uh, yeah, it was like the second week of December, so yeah, just a month, maybe a month and a week, something like that. But it's, yeah, yeah they're, they're really pumping high quality original content that I'm mostly really enjoying now. Because there was a time when they had a few shows, but it was like, eh, I don't really want to watch Hemlock Grove, I don't really want to watch, try Marco Polo. Like, But it feels like in the last few months they've really started pumping out stuff that I care. Obviously, Stranger Things over the summer. Yeah, and... I think the most important thing is they're, they're not getting rid of all that stuff that they had before that other people liked. Oh, it's yeah, just yeah. they've expanded. There's more variety, if anything. Yeah, so that's good. But no, a uh, series of unfortunate events ended up being surprisingly pretty great, and that's yeah. that's really cool. So, yeah, that's season one. Uh, let us know what you thought of the season and this finale in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching, and we hopefully should be back. We'll hear about renewal soon, hopefully for season two next year and uh yeah thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time